So I'm going to test the strength of the shoulder flexors in gravity eliminated plane. So first I want to see how far the person can move and then I take decisions from there. So I place one hand in the shoulder region to prevent undesirable motion without retracting the motion of the scapula. And I'm going to use two fingers to palpate the anterior deltoid or the clavicular portion of the pectoral major. I ask the person to move as far as they can possibly can. If there is no movement and no contraction, the gray of water is going to be zero. If I feel contraction but see no movement, the gray of water is going to be one. In the best effort of the person, if they move to partial range but less than full range, the gray of water is going to be two minus. If the person is able to move to full range in their best effort, the gray of water is going to be two. If the person, mm -hmm. if the person is going to move with two finger resistance way to the full range of motion, the gray of water is going to be two plus. So now I place the person in the gravity plane and I'm going to ask him to move. So if the person is able to move less than 50%, the gray of water is going to be two plus. If the person is able to move more than 50%, but less than 100%, the greater water is going to be three minus. If the person is able to move the full range, the greater water is going to be three. So now, if the person is able to move with the small resistance of two fingers, the full range, the greater water is going to be three plus. If the person is able to move the full range of motion with moderate uh, uh, strength, the greater water is going to be four. And if the person is able to move the full range of motion with maximum resistance, the greater water is going to be five. So I'm going to test the elbow flexors in gravity reduced eliminated plane. And the shoulder must be in 90 degrees and I need to stabilize the humerus. So what I like to do is to possibly move the elbow to see the flexion to see what is available. So the, the muscle I'm going to palpate is the anterior part of the bicep brachii and I will ask him to move the best he can. If there is no movement and no contraction, the gray of water is going to be zero. If there is contraction, but I don't see movement, the gray of water is going to be one. If the person in gravity plane is able to move but to partial range, the gray of water is going to be two minus. If the person in the best effort is able to move to full range, the gray of water is going to be two. Now, if the person is able to move to a full range plus two fingers of resistance weight, the gray of water is going to be two plus. So now I'm going to test the elbow flexors in the individual in the gravity plane. So the individual should be stable in sitting position or standing position. I'm going to stabilize the shoulder, the palm has to face forward and the shoulder slightly adopted. So I'm going to check the range of motion of this individual. So now, if he is able to move less than 90 degrees, the range of water is going to be two plus. If the individual is able to move more than 90 degrees, but less than full range, the individual is going to be three minus. If the individual is able to move the range of, in the gravity plane, full range, is, the range of water is going to be three. If the individual best effort with two finger resistance is going to be in the full range, the greater water is going to be three plus. If the individual is going to do the same in their best effort with moderate resistance, the greater water is going to be four. And if the individual with maximum strength is able to do full range, the greater water is going to be five. So I'm going to test in gravity eliminated plane the wrist flexors. So the forearm should be in the mid position, the wrist should be extended, and the fingers should be slightly flexed and relaxed. So I'm going to see how far the wrist can move to keep in mind to make all judgments. So I'm going to stabilize the distal end of the radius of the ulna, the ends, and then I'm going to place my fingers in the belly flexors and I will ask the person to flex the wrist. So if there is no movement and no contraction, the greater water is going to be zero. If I feel contraction but I see no movement, the greater water is going to be one. If the person in gravity reduced plane is able to initiate some movement in the gravity minimized plane but less than full grade, the greater water is going to be two minus. If the best effort of the person is to a full range, 
and that is the best effort that is going to be a water of two. If the person is able to do full range plus two fingers of resistance, the degree of water is going to be two plus. So now I'm testing the wrist flexors against the gravity plane. I put the forearm in the fully supinated position and the wrist is fully extended but the fingers are slightly flexed in a relaxed position. I'm going to ask the individual to move as far as he can. If he is able to move less than 50%, the greater water is going to be 2 plus. If the individual is able to move more than 50% but less than full range, the greater water is going to be 3 minus. If the individual is able to move the full range in the gravity plane, the rate is going to be 3. If the individual is able to move the full range and two fingers of resistance, the greater water is going to be 3 plus. If the individual is able to move in moderate resistance in the full range plane, the greater water is going to be 4. If the individual is able to do the full range with maximum resistance, the greater water is going to be 5. So now I'm going to test the knee extensors in gravity eliminated plane. So the person should be positioned sideline and I will position myself behind them. I'm going to support the leg that is not being tested. The test leg should have a 90 degree flexion in the knee and I will palpate the quadriceps of the leg. And the individual is going to try to extend their knee. If there is no movement and no contraction, the greater water is going to be zero. If I feel contraction but there is no movement, the greater water is going to be 1. If I see some movement but less than full, the greater water is going to be 2 minus. If the person is able to do the full extension, the greater water is going to be 2. If the person is able to do the full extension plus 2 fingers of resistance, the greater water is going to be 2 plus. So now I'm going to test the knee stances against gravity. The individual should sit comfortable on a treatment table or any stable chair. So the knee should be at 90 degrees and I'm going to see how much he can stand. So I'm going to ask the individual to stand the knee as far as he can. If he's able to do less than 50%, the greater water is going to be 2 plus. If he's able to do more than 50% but less than full extension, the greater water is going to 3 minus. If he is able to do the full extension, the greater water is going to be 3. In the case that with 2 <laughs> finger resistance, well, he is able to do the full extension, the greater water is going to be 3 plus. If he is going to do the full extension going up with moderate resistance, the greater water is going to be 4. If he is able to do the full extension with maximum resistance, the greater water is going to be 5.